This video is a continuation of our Nimula Director video series. In this segment, we'll demonstrate Nimula Director's ability to federate workloads into public clouds. For this video, we'll specifically use the example of federating to the Amazon EC2 public cloud. In our previous video segments, we focused on creating customers, groups, and users, and setting up permissions on the groups. We also enabled specific users to create image lists and execute launch plans. These steps were all performed under a fictitious deployment scenario where Acme Corporation wants to provide a private cloud to serve their internal customers. Now, let's assume an Acme Corporation employee named George wants to quickly spin up a VM for some testing, but does not want to overburden the load in Acme's private cloud, which is managed by Nimula Director. George chooses to use Nimula Director's federation capabilities to launch a VM instance into the Amazon EC2 public cloud. After logging into Amazon Web Services using Acme Corporation's credentials, let's view Acme's account information on Amazon's web interface. We can observe that there are no running instances on Acme's account. Now, let's bring up a terminal window pre-configured with Nimula Director's command line interface, which gives us access to the Nimula Director API. We'll take Acme's Amazon Web Services, or AWS, account access key and secret key and associate those with a special Nimula Director account called Acme EC2. This will be the only time where we'll be required to provide these keys. Next, we'll need to set up five specific permission rules to allow the Acme Images group, which George is a member of, to launch instances into Amazon EC2. Nimbula Director's powerful permissioning system allows fine-grained control for separating user permissions from object permissions. We'll first create a user permission to grant the Acme Admin group privileges to perform any action on the object, which represents the U.S. East Coast site of Amazon EC2. We'll need to create a similar object permission that acts as a handshake to the user permission to allow the object to be actionable by the Acme Admin group. From now on, the Acme Admin group is empowered to grant privileges for other groups to perform actions on that EC2 object. Next, the Acme Admin group will create a user permission to grant the Acme Images group, which George is a member of, privileges to perform any action on the EC2 object. The Acme Admin group will create a similar object permission as the handshake. Finally, the Acme Admin group will create a user permission to grant the Acme Images group privileges to perform any action on the Acme EC2 account that we created earlier. These permissions only need to be set once. From now on, anyone in the Acme Images group can launch instances into Amazon EC2. George will now create a new image list called EC2 Image List with a description of George's EC2 Image List. George will then populate his image list with an EC2 machine image, which is called an Amazon machine image, or AMI. George is now ready to launch his AMI image using his image list. One last thing before George launches his AMI image is that he needs to create a JavaScript object notation, or JSON file, which contains information on how he wants to launch his AMI image, including the shape, meaning the amount of CPU and memory to give his AMI image, the image list he wants to launch from, and other advanced attributes. George enters his launch command, which contains the EC2 site, the JSON file, and an EC2 proxy IP address. The AMI image is now instantiated into Amazon EC2. Note the AMI instance name. Listing the running instances in EC2 shows that George has indeed successfully launched the instance. As a final check, we'll go back to the Amazon Web Services interface and hit refresh. You'll now see the same AMI instance name appearing in the web interface. Congratulations, you've successfully used Nimula Director's API to launch an AMI image into Amazon EC2.